There is one Most High God, and it's not Jesus. Jesus, the Son of the Most High God, is great. But Jesus' Father, the Most High God, knows something his Son does not know. Therefore, the Trinity is a myth. Hey! Hey! hey. You take that back! Trinitarians say the three distinct persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, are each co-eternal, meaning all three have no beginning or end, they are co-equal, and co-powerful. Trinitarians say these three persons make up the one divine being, the one and only deity. Included in the false teaching of the Trinity is the idea that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are each omniscient, meaning each of the three knows absolutely all things, past and future. But there is a verse in the scriptures that troubles Trinitarians in which Jesus himself revealed something he is not aware of, but his Father is. This verse has long been cited by opponents of the Trinity, so Trinitarians have come up with several attempts over many centuries to solve this big problem for their pet doctrine. Their solutions are unsatisfactory to those outside the massive Trinitarian camp. Let's examine Jesus' words regarding his unawareness of a key future fact. In Matthew 24, Jesus' disciples asked him about his return in the conclusion of this current eon. Matthew 24, 1-3. And coming out, Jesus went from the sanctuary, and his disciples approached to exhibit to him the buildings of the sanctuary. Yet he, answering, said to them, Are you not observing all these? Verily I am saying to you, Under no circumstances may a stone here be left on a stone, which shall not be demolished. Now at his sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what is the sign of thy presence, and of the conclusion of the eon? Then, from verse 4 through verse 35, Jesus unloads on his disciples a flurry of future facts that he is aware of and reveals, by my count, 54 facts and signs regarding the future as it relates to his presence in the conclusion of the current eon, which the scriptures call the present wicked eon, Galatians 1.4. And among those 54 future facts are, by my count, 12 events that contain timing aspects and an order of events. This reveals that Jesus knew a great deal about the future and many timing aspects of those events. For example, in verses 29 through 31, Jesus reveals some future events and their timing and order. Now immediately after the affliction of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not be giving her beams, and the stars shall be falling from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Mankind in heaven, and then all the tribes of the land shall grieve, and they shall see the Son of Mankind coming on the clouds of heaven with power and much glory. And he shall be dispatching his messengers with a loud sounding trumpet, and they shall be assembling his chosen from the four winds from the extremities of the heavens to their extremities. But then in verse 36, Jesus says something that has troubled Trinitarians for centuries. Now concerning that day and hour, no one is aware, neither the messengers of the heavens nor the Son, except the Father only. The same Son of God who was aware of 54 facts concerning the future and his return was not aware of this one fact regarding the future, the day and hour of his return. This reveals the Son is not omniscient. He is not all-knowing like his Father. Therefore, the Son's lack of knowledge disproves the Trinity, which is said to include three co-equal persons. If the Father is aware of all things and the Son is not, they are not co-equal. Bye-bye, Trinity. Jesus reveals to us a difference between him and his Father. His Father is aware of something the Son is not aware of. And it shows the Father may reveal some future things to the Son, but not all. And we can see from this that the Father tabernacles the future, Isaiah 57, 15. So he is aware of all regarding the future because he is already there. The problem isn't with the Son of God not being aware of the future. He is. He knows a lot about the future, whatever his Father has revealed to him. The problem for Trinitarians is that the Son isn't aware of all the future. Big whoop, Trinitarians. Get over it. Now, let's do a deep dive into verse 36 to see what this verse really means. We don't need to distort this clear verse to explain the traditional myth of the Trinity. We just need to believe it. Trinitarians must expend great effort to explain away Jesus' words because it so clearly contradicts and denies their pet doctrine 
of the three-person deity. Even leading Trinitarian Sam Shamoon says the Son not knowing the day and hour can't be harmonized in the scriptures with Jesus also being God Almighty, which he's not, by the way. The Father is the Almighty. It's a mystery, according to Sam, so we should just accept the Trinity. You may not be able to answer how is it that Jesus is Jehovah God Almighty, equal to the Father and the Spirit, knows everything, but at the same time, being truly human, of the day hour, the Son doesn't know. You may not be able to come up with an answer because the Bible doesn't tell us how to harmonize those statements. But at the end of the day, God says, I'm unlike anything creation, no one comparable to me. I'm beyond your ability to fully comprehend. Will you now trust me and take me at my word? This is who I am. Not only does Jesus tell us he is not aware of the day and hour, his statement also reveals that another member of the mythical trinity, the Holy Spirit, is not aware of the day and hour. That's two, two thirds of the trinity who aren't aware of something. That's far from co-equal and it's really a bad look for Trinitarians. But they claim they have a good answer for this also. They don't. Again, Matthew 24, 36. Now concerning that day and hour, no one is aware, neither the messengers of the heavens nor the Son, except the Father only. Trinitarians say the Holy Spirit is the third distinct person in the Trinity. If this is the case, the Holy Spirit is excluded from being aware of the day and hour twice in this verse. First, the Son says no one is aware, thereby excluding the Holy Spirit. Then he says the Father only, which also excludes the Holy Spirit. Some Trinitarians will argue that Jesus simultaneously had two natures, one human and one divine, or God nature. They say Jesus' divine nature was aware of the day and hour, but his human nature was not. So, Trinitarians, which one of Jesus' two natures was aware of the 54 facts regarding the future in verses 4 through 35? Was he in God mode or man mode through those verses? If he was in God mode, did he then switch to man mode in verse 36 when he said he wasn't aware of the day and hour? If he was in man mode in verses 4 through 35, how did he know all those detailed facts regarding the future? Oh, the confusion caused by the false teaching of the Trinity. The false two natures of Jesus argument doesn't fit the context, and there is another serious problem with it. Let's say, just for fun, It is fun! The Trinitarians are correct, and the Holy Spirit is the third distinct person of the Trinity. The two natures argument they use for Jesus doesn't explain why the Holy Spirit wasn't aware of the day and hour, because the Holy Spirit is not human, therefore it was not limited by a human nature. Some Trinitarians saw the two natures of Christ explanation wouldn't work when applied to the Holy Spirit, so they devised other elaborate solutions to their dilemma. Some have even gone so far as to attempt to change the meaning of words in the verse to exclude the Holy Spirit altogether. They attempt to change the phrase no one to no man. But neither the Greek word for human, anthropos, or man, on air, is in the verse. The Greek word for no one is udais, and it means no one. After Jesus laid out all these detailed future facts to his disciples, it would have been logical for them to assume Jesus knew everything about the future. So, to keep them and others from thinking the no one only refers to man or a limited group, Jesus includes the messengers in heaven and himself in the no one. And that no one would include both the human nature and the divine nature of the Son, if he actually did have two natures. But the no one does have one exception. The Father the Son was aware of the 54 future facts because his Father revealed them to him, but the Father did not reveal the fact of the day and hour. The Father, not the Son, is the source of all, including all knowledge. Romans 11:36, Seeing that out of him, and through him, and for him is all. To him be the glory for the eons. Amen. And 1 Corinthians 8, 6, Nevertheless, for us there is one God, the Father, out of whom all is, and we for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all is. The Father is the source of all, including the Son, and all that the Son knows. There is a hierarchy in the Scriptures, not a trinity. And this hierarchy can be seen in the knowledge of the Father as compared to the Son. And Jesus acknowledges the Father's rights over all knowledge and who he reveals knowledge to. Acts 1, 6-7 
Those indeed then who are coming together asked Jesus, saying, Lord, art thou at this time restoring the kingdom to Israel? Yet he said to them, Not yours is it to know the times or the era which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. The Father has jurisdiction over his knowledge. He decides to whom he will reveal it or from whom he will conceal it. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of Elohim to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to investigate a matter. This is a very simple concept to understand. No one can know anything unless the Father reveals it. Let's look quickly at two more popular Trinitarian attempts to explain away the truth of Jesus' words in Matthew 24:36. And for any Trinitarians watching, if you have another solution to your Trinity dilemma, please comment below. Please use scripture to support your argument. Back to Matthew 24:36. The Greek word I do is translated here as aware. It is a verb and God used it 319 times in his Greek scriptures. It means perceive and to have or get knowledge by means of any or all the senses. Note that there is only one verb in Jesus' statement and it applies to all four people or groups Jesus mentioned. No one, the messengers, the son, and the father. And the verb is in the perfect form, which is also known as the complete form or the state form. This means the state or present condition is the ongoing result of a past completed action. It describes a completed action in the present time. The unawareness of no one, the messengers, and the son is complete because they have not perceived the future fact of the day and hour. And the father's awareness is complete because he has perceived the future fact of the day and hour. The son's unawareness is the same as the no one and the messengers of the heavens. The following Trinitarian solution to Jesus not being aware is an ancient one that has been used for centuries. The Trinitarians found an occurrence of the Greek word I do in 1 Corinthians 2 2 they believe solves the riddle of why Jesus said he wasn't aware of the day and hour. It doesn't. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 2, And I, Paul, coming to you, brethren, came not with superiority of word or of wisdom, announcing to you the testimony of God. For I decide not to perceive anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because Paul uses the very common Greek verb, I do, translated here as perceive, Trinitarians think they can transfer this whole thought of Paul's onto Jesus not being aware of the day and hour. This is a jump of epic and unwarranted proportions. Notice Paul says he actively decided not to perceive anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That was his choice. And this is obviously not literal regarding what Paul actually perceived. He was aware of many other things, but he decided to put all those things in the back seat of his mind and leave Jesus Christ and him crucified in the front seat. Basically, Paul was playing dumb regarding everything he was aware of so that he could focus on Jesus Christ and him crucified as his primary message. In Matthew 24, there was no active decision made by anyone, including the Son, to be unaware of the day and hour. No one, including the Son, is playing dumb. They were all simply and literally unaware of the day and hour, except for the Father. Now let's look at one final popular argument that Trinitarians use to try to show that the Son and the Holy Spirit actually were aware of the day and hour despite the clear words of Christ. This is the Jewish wedding argument. Now bringing that to Jesus' statement in Matthew 24, when Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, not the angels nor the Son, but the Father only, what he's saying is no one has the prerogative to make that day known. Now contextually, what Jesus is referring to is the coming, his future coming, to receive his bride, he even goes on to give a parable of 10 virgins, remember that, and, and of the bridegroom. Yeah. He's clearly talking about the coming of the bridegroom for his bride, uh, or of the groom for his bride. And uh, in that context, he says, nobody has the right to make that day known. In Jewish culture, when it came time for a son to go and get his bride, the right belonged to the father to declare that day to the people. The son couldn't tell people when that day was. And so all Jesus is doing in Matthew 24 is saying, I am the son, he is the father, it's his prerogative as the father to declare that day to men. That's why that passage doesn't refute the spirit knowing the day or the hour, because Jesus is talking about the father's prerogative to declare the day, which is the father's prerogative. And that's proven, by the way, in Acts 1, when the disciples said to Jesus, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the father has fixed by his own authority, 
He says, you just be busy about the work that, that God has given you. Uh, so it's the Father's prerogative to make that day known. First, notice how Anthony Rogers changes no one to no man when referencing Jesus' words in Matthew 24, 36. Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour. No man knows. No man. No man. No man. Rogers knows Greek. Is he being dishonest to bolster his Trinitarian myth? One has to alter the meaning of words in Matthew 24, 36 to turn no one is aware to no one is making aware or no one is declaring. Let's change the words to align with this bad Trinitarian argument. Remember, the verb I do is in the perfect slash complete form. It describes a completed action in which the results are still in effect in the present time. If this verse was talking about making aware instead of simply being aware, it would have to be written like this. Now concerning that day and hour, no one has made aware, neither the messengers of the heavens nor the Son, except the Father only. If this Trinitarian argument is true, then that would mean the Father has already made others aware of the day and hour. Trinitarians, when and where did the Father declare and make known the day and hour of his son's return? And who now, besides the Father, is aware of the day and hour because it has already been made known? The word I do means to have or get knowledge by means of any or all the senses. It is the having or receiving of information through the senses. It is not the giving out or declaring of information. Information. Trinitarians' failed attempts to change the meaning of words make a mess of Jesus' clear words. Trinitarians are willing to change Christ's words to prop up their false teaching. I don't recommend this tactic. My suggestion, don't try to change his words. Believe them. Jesus' whole answer to his disciples was based on their question because they didn't know when he was coming back. Not because they knew but couldn't make known when he was coming back. Jesus' unawareness is the same as theirs. The messengers, the Holy Spirits, and everyone else's. Jesus made it pretty clear. Only the Father is aware of the day and hour. Not even the triune God knows. Are there secrets within the Trinity? Apparently so. Is that co-equal? No. We don't have to run all over the scriptures or all over Jewish tradition to try to find the simple and plain meaning of the words Jesus used in Matthew 24, 36 and Mark 13, 32. Right in the immediate context of both verses, we see Jesus applying the same Greek word, I do, to other people who weren't aware of something. Matthew 24, 42 through 44. Be watching then, for you are not aware on what day your Lord is coming. Now that be knowing, for if the householder were aware in what watch the thief is coming, he would watch and would not let his house be tunneled into. Therefore you also become ready, for in an hour which you are not supposing, the Son of Mankind is coming. And in Mark 13, 33 through 35. Beware, be vigilant and pray, for you are not aware when the era is. It is as a man, a traveler, leaving his home and giving his slaves authority into each his work. And he directs the doorkeeper that he may be watching. Watch then, for you are not aware when the Lord of the house is coming, at evening or midnight or cock crowing or morning. The same word Ido used in the immediate context means not being aware of the day, the watch, or the era, etc. It does not mean not making known or not declaring the day, the watch, or the era. Trinitarians, stop making stuff up and twisting God's scriptures to prop up your heretical myth of the Trinity. Trinitarians see the idea that the Son is not aware of everything as diminishing the Son. It is a diminishing of their false version of the Son, whom they claim to be co-equal with the Father and part of the mythical trinity. But it's not a diminishing of the true Son. If he wasn't aware of the day and hour, he wasn't aware. Get over it, Trinitarians, and get over your false and dangerous Trinitarianism. Jesus not being aware of the day and hour destroys the trinity, but it does not destroy the Son's rightful place as the Son of the Most High God. The Son is a God-placer in His own right, albeit a God-placer under His Father, who is the only true God-slash-placer. Jesus not being aware of the day and hour does not destroy His esteemed position as the firstborn of every creature, which is one of His greatest glories. In fact, in Matthew 24, 36, Jesus is honoring His Father as the one who truly is omniscient. Trinitarians stop dishonoring the Father. 
Jesus is perfectly content knowing his Father is greater than him, but Trinitarians can't stand the thought. They are continually trying to diminish the Father and elevate the Son so they can be co-equals in the mythical and heretical Trinity. Jesus' Father is the only true God-placer. He alone is the Deity. He alone is the Almighty. Honor Him for who He is. And while you're at it, honor the Son for who He is. Honor them both. They are both worthy. To see why the false teaching of the Trinity is dangerous, I suggest this video to you next.